Hi, my name is Sip Mendes. Welcome to Sip's Wood Chips. Today's fun project is making a butterfly net. You can use it for catching uh, butterflies, insects, works great with lizards, and, and things like that. Stay tuned, I'll show you how to make this. To make this project, you're going to need uh, some very simple things you probably have around the house. Things like a wire coat hanger. Now, these do come in uh, thick and thin. If you can find a thick one, they're always better. You're going to need a little bit of um, cloth. This is an old sheer um, drape from my wife. My wife donated. You need a little block of wood. This is poplar, but you can use yellow pine or most anything. It's one and a half by uh, almost two inches. You're going to need a Phillips screwdriver, a pair of diagonal cutters for cutting the, rock, the coat hanger, a nice pair of um, needle nose pliers will help for bending. You'll need a tape measure and a two foot piece of half inch dowel rod. This isn't much of a uh, wood lathe project, but if you want to turn one of these on your wood lathe, go for it. Some shears for cutting. A uh, Phillips screw one inch. This looks like a, like a number eight by one inch. And a small washer. They usually call these 3 16 washers, but they have a quarter inch hole in them. Uh, a drill. This is a 3 seconds drill bit. A little bit smaller than an eighth of an inch. You're also going to need a half inch uh, Forstner bit. But you can use probably any kind of bit and I'll use that on the drill press. Okay, to start we're going to make the, the holder and we're going to take this little block of wood here and we're going to trim off the corners just a little bit and drill a half inch hole. Okay, so I'm just going to cut off the, the corners a little bit so they're not sharp. And, uh, On this side, I'm going to drill about an inch deep, and on the other side, I'm only going to drill about um, maybe three eighths of an inch deep. So I've made X's on both sides to tell me where the center is. I'm not going to really try to make them meet up on the other side, but it'll be close. Okay, so that's three eighths of an inch deep, and on this side, I'm going to drill about an inch. And I can drill it uh, even more than that. Anything more than an inch is fine. That's about a half inch. Go a little deeper. And that should be fine. Here's my dowel rod, and my dowel rod is uh, about 24 inches long, and I'm going to put a little bit of glue in this end, and I'm going to make sure I wipe it all the way around really good. And I'm going to put just a little bit of glue on this side, on this end. Maybe a little bit on this end. So I'm going to wipe it around. Like that. Push it in there. Make sure it seats nice, good and well. And we'll wipe off any excess. And wipe it over on a paper towel. Okay, and we'll let that set for just a minute or two. So here in my bandsaw, I'm just going to drill a small line 
right in here so that my coat hanger wire will fit in. So I've cut my slit in there, and uh, it doesn't need to be any more than an eighth of an inch wide. But it needs to come right to the top of the, uh, the bottom of the hole. The next fun part is uh, doing a little uh, wire bending. This is a plain old coat hanger, and um, they do come in several different thicknesses. Uh, get the thickest one you can, that makes them a little bit sturdier. And what you're going to do is um, take a pair of diagonal cutters and I'm going to cut them right here close to the hook. Well, if you can't break it all the way through the first time, make a notch and then bend them a couple of times and they usually break. There you go. You need to be careful with these ends. These ends are sharp. They're jagged. Take your uh, coat hanger and I would straighten it out first just using hands. You can use pliers if you need to. But usually hands work just fine. And then with the uh, tape measure, go ahead and measure that and see how big it is. So this one is about 33 inches. Then, once you got it straight, bend it into a, a uh, hoop. And uh, try to make it as smooth as possible, but it doesn't have to be perfect. And, yeah, another thing you might need is a file. So, uh, while you have the ends here, be very careful with the ends. Keep them away from your face and eyes. And file off any sharp burrs. You'll be thankful later. Then using your needle nose pliers, these have long handles so it makes it a little bit easier. So you're going to bend these around and make an eyelid that you can pass a screw through. So that eyelid has to be large enough so the screw will go through it. And it can go through nice and tight as it is better than loose. Then uh, bend it back and you want it kind of centered on the, on the shaft there. And I, if I bend one to the right, I bend one, the other one to the left, so they loop in a different direction. Okay. And I'm going to turn these so that they're flat, straight up. So that when the screw goes through it, it passes through snugly. Okay. So with your 316 screw bit we're going to drill a hole in the center. And I'm going to go ahead and mark it with the pencil. And it needs to be about an inch deep. It can be slightly less. And this I will do by hand. this one in here, make sure it seats in there. We'll put this one over here, make sure it seats in there. We can pass our screw through there and tighten them down so they don't come back out. Okay, you don't want to strip it out because then the, you'll be in trouble.
<coughs> then form your loop so it makes a nice round circle. We'll measure that again. That's ten and a half, ten, so right around ten inches. And that'll make a nice butterfly net. So, so if it's ten inches in diameter, if you take ten, if you take ten diameter times 3.1459 we need to cut a piece of material 31 inches but we're going to cut it longer than that about 33 inches because we're going to have to cut and fold so here's the material we're going to use and uh, these fortunately have a, a pleat that the uh, rod goes through, so we're going to take advantage of that. So I measured out this, and that's 32 inches, and I marked it 32 inches. Okay. The length of the net can be whatever you want to make it. Yeah, we'll go 18 inches. This this is 18 inches on, on my ruler here. And that's going to be a little bit off camera. This is the 18 inch line over here. And I'll mark that. So you're not all that worried about measurements. Make a fold it. Line up the edges. Okay. Then I'm going to take the, the pencil and I'm just going to make some dash lines to help me know where to cut until I have my 33 inches of this. Right up there. inches and then I'll then I'll mark from top to bottom about where they're gonna meet. Now I'll just cut along my dash lines. And then I'll mark from the, I'll cut from one dash line to the next. direction. And this one too will cut from one dash line to the next. And this is the piece of cloth I'll use. Okay, so this is going to come back around like that to make uh, the opening. And like that. So this tapers, that's, this is uh, 16 inches across, 8 inches is the rough center. 2 inches in this direction, 2 inches in this direction, and I'm going to want to make it cone shaped. So, I'm going to sew it right across here. And I'm going to sew it right across here. Okay, here comes the next fun part. Sewing with zip. I'm going to do 
is I have to sew these together. And I should have got some pins, but I didn't. What I'm going to do is start right here. And I'm using a dark thread so you can maybe see it better. And, uh, so I'm going to go ahead and start the stitch here. And I'm going to go back and forth a couple of times to lock the, uh, the thread. And I'm sewing inside out. I'm going to flip this around later. So on the edge, and uh, this machine sometimes it skips, so I may have to go back and do it again. Now I'm gonna go so along my line. It looks like it's doing some kind of crazy pattern, but it's really just missing, missing the stitches. And if you can get someone else to do this and take it to someone that's really might be better. Now this over here is is doesn't need to be sewn on, so I'm just going to sew to right off this corner here, and I'm going to go back and lock the stitch again. Okay, my uh, machine sewed so poorly. I'm going to go back over it, and I'm going to sew with just a, a straight stitch this time. I think. So let's see if I know how to do that. Now there. And I'm just going to sew a straight stitch this time. And, should do it. So all I have to do is cut the outline of this and just don't cut the threads. And that should be just fine for, for what we're doing. Okay. 
same on this one. Let's cut the ends. You want this, this small end here so that the insects will wind up here and you can still get your hand in there to, to catch them. If you make it cone shaped right to a sharp point, then you can't get your fingers in there. So then we'll turn it inside out. And again, I, I use the black thread so that you can see it better on the camera. And there's, there's our net. Put the net in. We're going to use this little part here and we can run our, our wire inside it. And so we'll just start it through there. other end like that and we'll go ahead and we'll put our screw through here again with the washer put our screw on the washer in here and uh, another thing too make sure this washer will fit inside the, the half inch hole that's why I used a, a 3 16 so it just barely fits in there. Get our wires down into the grooves. So it fits nicely in there. And there we have our, our net. Yeah, these should keep the kids busy for, for the summer. So for this project you might also need a sewing machine. Or know someone who does sew. Because you need to, to make the net. You need a little, might need a little bit of help with that. One final note on this project is take a piece of sandpaper. We want to sand the dowel rod just to make sure there's no little splinters on it. And this end, it needs to be sanded too. You need to round it off almost like a broomstick handle so that it doesn't have any, any uh, rough edges when you're sawing it. And that should take care of it. You can also give it a coat of uh, clear polyurethane would help. And uh, the same up here, you might want to sand this off a little bit, make sure there's no splinters, sharp edges. Okay. Well, if you've enjoyed this video, click on like. If you're not a subscriber, click on subscribe. If you're not a member of YouTube, sign up for an account. It's quick and easy. Take care.